Hello, I'm Joseph Barilla, Director of the Morris County Office of Planning and Preservation. As you may know, April 12, 1861, was the attack on Fort Sumner in South Carolina, the opening salvos of the American Civil War. Virginia secessionist Edmund Ruffin claimed to have fired the first shot on Union troops at 4.30 a.m. At 7 a.m., the United States Army responded. Captain Admiral Doubleday, who eventually became general, was ordered to return fire on Confederate forces. The war had begun and lasted until 1865. General Doubleday will go on to accompany President Lincoln on the train for the Gettysburg Address. He later became a resident of Morris County, where he spent many years living in Mendham until his death in 1893. In memory of the opening shots of the Civil War, the Office of Planning and Preservation is releasing the latest edition to the Morris County Veterans Compendium, the Civil War Veterans. The list features hundreds of Morris County men and attempts to follow their lives during conflict and their contributions during peacetime. Today, I am speaking to you from the independent host company number one firehouse in Morristown. Do you remember one such Civil War vet who later served as a first responder? Harry Glovell Emil, affectionately known as H.G. H.G.'s Morristown military family dates to his grandfather, George, who was a soldier in the American Revolution. He was captured by the British and managed to escape. Private Emil was attached to Company K, 7th New Jersey, and participated at Gettysburg. As many combat veterans continued to do, he revisited the battlefield years after the war's end. In civilian life, H.G. owned and operated a stationary store and was a charter member of the Indy Host Company No. 1 in 1867. Both his former store on South Street and Firehouse on Market Street remain standing today as physical reminders of the men and women that built Morris County throughout history. Occasionally, Morris County veterans began new lives outside of New Jersey, as was the case with Charles Erb, another first responder. Born in Germany, Mr. Erb became an American citizen in 1859 at the Morristown Courthouse and was a longtime resident of Randolph. After his service with Company L, 9th New Jersey, Mr. Erb established himself in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania, becoming the High Constable. Upon his death in 1895, Mr. Erb was returned home to Morris County and buried in St. Mary's Cemetery in Dover. Now, I'd like to introduce Commissioner Deputy Director Stephen Shaw from another location with ties to a Morris County Civil War soldier. Thanks, Joe. So today, I welcome you to another physical reminder of Morris County's rich history, the Martin Burry House, right here in Pequannock. Built around 1720, the home was purchased by the township in 2015 with assistance through a grant of $175,000 from the Morris County Historic Preservation Trust Fund program. The home is now a historical museum. With the 2015 grant included, the Historic Preservation Trust Fund has provided more than $1.1 million to support interior and exterior rehabilitation work to this historic home. The house is an outstanding example of surviving 18th century Dutch architecture. You know, many of us look at historic buildings and homes and think about the lives of the people who have crossed its thresholds over the centuries. Mr. Burry's will from 1785 indicated a modest homestead with furniture, tools, clothing, and two enslaved persons. In the case of the Martin Burry house, we also know of another family in the 1880s that made their home here. Native New Yorker turned Morris County resident James Robert Evans and his wife, Julia. In December of 1885, James and Julia celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary in this house with over 100 people in attendance. Now, given the large gathering and the size of this home, I can easily understand why the term for a Victorian era party was often called a crush. I bet you didn't know that. I certainly didn't. Now, 10 years after this party, James Robert Evans was celebrated for a more somber episode in his life. You see, on February 25th, 1895, Mr. Evans was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions during the Civil War. Now, Mr. Evans died on December 27th, 1918, and is buried in the historic First Reformed Churchyard in Pompton Plains. Buried in that same cemetery is another soldier of the Civil War who was once the sexton of the church. That person would be Charles Schuyler. He was born around 1833 in New Jersey as an enslaved person. 
It's unknown when he gained his freedom. But what is known is that during the Civil War, Mr. Schuyler enlisted as a cook in the 1st New Jersey Infantry. Tully, as he was known, was shot in the neck and shoulder by Confederate forces even after his surrender during the Second Battle of the Wilderness in Virginia. He was left for dead in the woods. But Mr. Schuyler survived his wounds and 11 months in a Confederate prison. Tully returned home to Paquonic and became a member of the Bloomingdale Cornet Band that was formed in 1884. He performed on the kettle drum. The Bloomingdale Cornet Band remains in existence as New Jersey's oldest cornet band. Mr. Schuyler died in 1898 and was buried without a marker. His bandmates played a concert tribute to Tully at the cemetery. In 2011, Charles Schuyler was honored with a military stone. The ceremony included a concert given by the Bloomingdale Cornet Band. So I'll leave you with this tribute to Charles Schuyler and all of the Morris County Civil War veterans who so bravely fought to keep the United States united. Mm -hmm.